Hello and welcome to NL's online guitar lesson series. Over the course of the next six weeks, we're going to learn lots of awesome stuff from the very beginning of the guitar. So you're going to learn how to hold the instrument, you're going to learn how to play the instrument, and you're going to learn, hopefully, how to think about the guitar moving forward. Before we get started playing the guitar, it's really important to get warmed up. We want to make sure that we have lots of blood moving through our shoulders, our arms, our hands, and our fingers especially. That will help to keep us nice and loose, it will help to make it easier to play, and it will help to prevent injury. So there's lots of movements we can do to make that happen, and here's a few of them now. We can start off just by shaking our arms. We can shake one arm at a time, or we can shake both arms. Feels a little bit silly just to do it on your own, but it doesn't really matter just to get your arms moving, to get blood moving through them. You can also roll your shoulders back and forward. A lot of people forget about the shoulders, but when we play guitar, our shoulders are moving into different positions, and you can get quite stiff if you're not nice and loosened off. The next thing to do would be to shake our wrists. Again, just to get the blood flowing through them, get used to moving through different ranges of motion in our wrists, and we can roll them around in circles as well just to stretch off all the tendons and ligaments and muscles that control our hand. And we can also do the same thing with our fingers. We can wiggle our fingers to get them nice and warmed up, and we can stretch them in and out like this, just to make sure that we're nice and warm. We can even stretch our hands out like this, like this, or if you feel like it, every individual finger as well, just to make sure that you're nice and loose. Even something as simple as rubbing your hands together can help to warm them up and get you ready to play. Just play around with all these movements, maybe make up some of your own, and try to build a little routine that works well for you. So most guitarists won't do a set routine before they play every time, but almost everybody will have a little bit of a shake-off, will have a little bit of a loosen-off, because it really does help. Now that we're nice and warmed up, let's get cracking on with the lesson. Welcome to lesson one. For this lesson, we're just going to cover some basics about the guitar itself. Now, there are two main types of guitar, acoustic and electric. Those are the kinds that you're going to encounter day to day. Electric guitars are usually a bit slimmer. They've got this kind of rock and roll look to them. I'm sure you've seen them if you've seen them in movies or TV or on YouTube. If you've seen someone play guitar to a large crowd through a speaker, it was probably an electric guitar. The other kind of guitar, which is the kind of guitar I've got here, is an acoustic guitar. It's a little bit bulkier, it's a little bit bigger. Usually, they have a natural wood finish. A lot of electric guitars have bright colours or different kind of patterns for their finish. But acoustic guitars usually just look like wood. So let's start by talking about the part of the guitar that actually makes the sound, the strings. The strings are right here, and they run from here to here. On a standard guitar, we have six strings. And they're arranged in pitch order, from lowest up here to the highest down here. It's a little bit confusing to say that this is the lowest string, because it's up high, right? It's closest to the sky, and this one, the highest string, is closest to the ground. The important thing to remember is that we address the strings by pitch, not really by location. It's more useful to say that this is a high string because it sounds high, and this is a low string because it sounds low. As I said, the strings are attached to the guitar at both ends. At this side, they're attached to the guitar through the saddle. They run over this part here called the bridge through the saddle, which vibrates this whole front face of the guitar, which is called the soundboard. On an acoustic guitar, this soundboard vibrates, which vibrates the air inside the guitar. As you can see, this is a large chamber of air, which vibrates, and that sound exits through the front of the guitar, through the sound hole toward the audience. On an electric guitar, the sound is made in a very different way, because there is no soundboard, and there is no empty space in the guitar. Generally, Electric guitars are just made of one solid piece of wood. Exactly how electric guitars make their sound is out with the scope of this video, but it is very interesting if you want to look it up.
following the strings to the other end, they attach at this side over the nut of the guitar into the tuning pegs. The tuning pegs are very important because they control the pitch of the strings. The pitch that a string makes, the speed at which it vibrates, is determined by how heavy it is, how long it is, and how tightly the guitar is pulling it. And the tuning pegs allow us to change the tightness of the string. You can see if I turn the peg in this direction, I'm loosening off the string. If I turn the peg in the other direction, I'm tightening the string back up and that changes the pitch. This is the mechanism that we use to get all of our strings in tune. Although there's no rule that says that any string has to be tuned to a standard pitch, conventionally we have a tuning called standard tuning that most guitarists play most of the time. And it sounds like this. Staying in tune is really important because if your guitar isn't in tune to the song that you're trying to play or to the accompaniment around you, it's not going to sound right. So you need to make sure that your guitar is in tune appropriately for what you're playing. Because the vast majority of guitarists play in standard tuning most of the time, that is what we're going to start with today. So in Western music, we identify musical pitches, different notes, by letter names. We start at A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way up to G, and then as we get higher, the cycle repeats. So G, A, B, C, D, and on and on, up and up. For standard tuning on a guitar, the strings are tuned to E, A, D, G, B, and E. This can be a bit hard to remember, but there's a really useful mnemonic, which goes even after dinner, good boys eat. And that's how I remember how to tune the strings of a guitar. Now with a bit of practice, you can learn to tune a guitar by ear. That is just by listening to the strings and deciding if they should be higher or lower based on your experience. But when it really matters, for example, before a recording or before a live performance, it's usually best to use an electronic tuner like this one. You can also get a tuning app for your phone that works the same way using your phone's microphone. It'll tell you whether each string is tuned high or lower than it should be. Things like temperature, humidity, and movement can all affect the tuning of the guitar. Just remember that this is kind of a living object. It's made of wood. The moisture content can change. The temperature can stretch the strings or it can contract them and that can all affect the pitch. So it's really important and a really good idea before you start playing to make sure that you're in tune anytime you play and anytime you practice. It certainly can't hurt. So I'm going to tune the guitar just now to get ready for our lesson. Easy as that. Using an electronic tuner, it can just tell you when you're too high and too low. A really good tip is that if a string is too high, it's usually best to loosen off past where you want to be and then to tighten up. That just means that the tuning is a bit more stable. It's less likely to go out of tune later on. It's also important to remember that brand new strings will tend to stretch more after you've put them on than old strings do because old strings are already stretched out. And that means that new strings will go out of tune faster. Doing crazy techniques like bending the neck or bending strings very hard can also stretch the strings out of tune.
The last important piece of guitar anatomy that we need to learn are the frets. These are these pieces of wire that run vertically across the fretboard. Now, frets are numbered, starting at zero for an open string with no fret. Or if you prefer, this nut could be called the zero fret. And then going to one, two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way up the guitar. So by pressing the string down with our finger, we can effectively shorten the string because it's no longer able to vibrate across its entire length from the bridge to the nut. It now has to vibrate from the fret that we press to the bridge. Because we're shortening the string, we change the frequency that it vibrates at. So if you remember, a shorter string will vibrate faster. And as we move up the frets, we make the string shorter and shorter, and that makes the pitch higher and higher. To vibrate the strings, our right hand will pluck them or strum them. So we can either use our thumb, we can use our fingernails or the pads of our fingers, or we can use a plectrum or guitar pick, just like this. All of these will create a different sound and it's good to get a bit of experience with all of them, even if you prefer one or the other. And that is how we play different notes on the guitar. It's really as simple as that. We just change the length of the strings as we play them and we pluck them with our right hand. If we can get good at this, then we can really start to make music. Well, thanks very much for tuning into today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned an awful lot. Just as we finish our lesson today, we're going to round it off the same way as we started with some stretches and some cool down movements. This is again just to make sure that we stay nice and loose now that we're finished, that we don't cramp up or get sore, and that means that we can play even better tomorrow. Okay, so a lot of the same movements we did at the start, we can do now. We can roll our shoulders, we can shake off our arms, we can roll our wrists, and we can stretch off our fingers. Just like at the beginning, the key thing is to keep things moving, to keep things warm and stretched off. With all that done, all that's left is to say thank you very much for joining us today at NL Guitar Lessons Online. Please check out some of our other content and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.